January was the month of me getting back into my alien romance books. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in January. Hi there everyone, it's a new setting, uh, it's a new place, it's a new year. I'm super excited and hopeful for this year coming up with booktube and life and everything in general. I had a pretty good reading month in January. I ended up reading 20 books. Granted, most of those were audiobooks that were under 200 pages so <laughs> first i'm just going to talk about the book that i'm currently reading because i technically read like half of it in the month of january and that is the hate you give by angie thomas this is a reread for me i originally um listened to this book i believe two years ago loved it five stars this one's gonna get a five stars this reread i'm actually in a multicultural literature reading class this semester so uh we got to pick out of two books and I picked this one again because it had been a while since I read it and I'm loving it. I actually forgot a lot that happened in this book. Um, so I loved how I got to reread this book in January, well half of it at least, and um, get back into this world and learn some more about Star all over again. If you didn't know, this is a young adult novel um, dealing with a girl named Star and how she witnesses her best, one of her best friends uh, be shot by a white police officer for basically doing nothing. It brought to light some things that I didn't even know before because I'm ignorant in some ways because of the way that I grew up. I love this. I'm gonna get a five stars from me. I still have about a fourth of the way through and I'm gonna finish it later this week for my class. Next we're gonna talk about all the books that I read during the Smutathon. That is a readathon that happened uh, in early January where you read books that are steamy. This is hosted by Raya the Marie and Ginger Reads Laney. I will link down below my reading blog that I have for this readathon. I ended up reading four things, so please go watch that if you want more details about these books. The first book that I read was 30 Day Boyfriend by Whitney G. This was an audible escape listen. I listened to it, I believe, all in one day. All I know is that this completed the fake dating slash fake marriage trope, and it's an office romance. Um, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. I just honestly wish that it was longer. A lot was missing in the center of the book. Next, I read Learn My Lesson by Katie Robert. This is the second book in the Wicked Villains series. These books are basically retellings of kind of like Disney villains, but then the Disney villain gets with like the heroine or the hero um, instead of like the protagonist couple being together. It's a hero and a villain together. A very steamy. This one was about Meg, Hercules, and Hades, all three of them. Uh, this book was good. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. Um, it went way deeper than I thought it was going to in some aspects. You'll understand if you read the book. I read this as an ebook and I gave it four out of five stars. Next is another Audible Escape listen. We have The End Zone by LJ Shen. I don't remember what happens in this book. I think it's a romance between a girl and her best friend is a guy and their roommates? Maybe? <laughs> I don't remember. I give this one two out of five stars. I guess if you want to know my detailed thoughts while I was reading it or listening to it, go check out that vlog because I don't remember what happened. <laughs> and the last book that I read during Smutathon was The High Women by Kerrigan Byrne. I physically read this one. Here are some tabbies. Um, and this was a buddy read with Melissa over at Melissa H. I will link her channel down below. I love her. Please go give her a follow, subscribe to her, she's amazing. But we ended up, I believe, giving this book the same rating. I gave it four stars. This is about a girl named Farah. This is a historical romance book and um, it takes place in Scotland and London. Growing up, I believe she was in an orphanage and her best friend was a boy there. And then one day they get separated and she believes he's dead. And then there's like this crook coming around London named Dorian Blackwell. He uh, sparks some feelings up in her and she may get kidnapped by him. I don't know how to describe this book. I went in blind and I loved it. I, I recommend going in blind. I really enjoyed this. The only issue that I had is that I saw like the twist coming and I don't know, just it didn't feel like a five star read from me, but I did enjoy this one nonetheless. Next we're going to talk about my only DNF for the month of January. <laughs> this one's called Blind Reader Wanted by Georgia Lacare. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. I'm so sorry. I got this one off of Kindle Unlimited. I have been trying to read books that have more disability 
or more sickness, illness, rep in it because I'm a person who deals with disability so I really wanted to read more romance books that dealt with that. Um, so this is about a girl who is blind and there is this man who is kind of like Abu Radley for this town. I believe he's scarred from being in war and uh, he wants someone to read to him because he's lonely but he doesn't want someone who can look at him all the time and judge him based on his looks um, because he is so scarred. He puts like a blind reader wanted sign up I believe at the library and this girl applies for it and she becomes a reader for him basically. Goes over to his place and reads a book to him. That sounded so good. That premise sounded amazing. That's why I picked it up. I think I got 70% of the way through to where I was like why am I reading this? Like, I literally don't care. It was too cringy for me. A lot of the stuff in this was very cringy and um, I don't, I don't want to sound rude. I don't know if our author is visually impaired at all. I follow someone on YouTube who is visually impaired and this character did something that the girl I'm subscribed to explicitly stated that blind people don't do that. Or maybe it's just her that doesn't do it. I don't know. I felt really weird with that part of it. And I don't know. I just felt very cringy while reading this. And it was very, very, very insta lovey and not the insta lovey that I'm okay with. There are some instances where insta love is okay with me. This was not one of those, unfortunately. So I ended up DNFing or not finishing this one. Okay, we're stopping the video. For a second here. So I want to do a new thing each video um, where I'm going to shout someone out from my mug. I have every single booktuber that I am subscribed to that I am in love with in this mug and um, I'm going to pull a name out of the cup every video that I make and shout someone out um, because I really want to spread some love this year so that's what I'm gonna do. So first one. Shake it do this one a great one to start out with okay we have Hannah from being the pathologist I love Hannah a lot she has not been making videos recently because she's been busy but uh, she's gonna start up again in 2020 that's what she told me um, I love Hannah she is one of my oldest friends here on booktube she talks about some amazing books. Um, she's mainly a YA reader. Um, so if you're into YA books, please go check out Hannah. Uh, I believe she reads contemporary and fantasy, if I'm not mistaken. I love her personality. She's so bubbly. She's so sweet. She's so nice and welcoming and just an amazing person. And I think she deserves way more recognition than what she's getting. Like, she should have all the subscribers y'all like please go subscribe to her she's fantastic she's wonderful i love her so much and i know that y'all will too in january was the month of me getting back into my alien romance books <laughs> i read a bunch a bunch and none of them i believe were over three and a half stars <laughs> i i just love listening to these i don't know why i love popping the my earphones in walking to class and just listening to an alien romance book and i continue with a series that i don't give over three stars <laughs> just because i like the world <laughs> the first book that i'm going to talk about is assigned a mate by grace goodwin i ended up reading actually a, maybe up to book number five in this series i don't remember the names of them but i'm not going to like list them off for you because they're basically all of the same thing so assigned a mate uh this one if i remember correctly uh this one is on audible escape by the way um i believe the first three books are on audible escape and then you have to buy the rest of them um i had a credit so i think i actually only read the first four anyway um this girl basically goes into an interstellar bride program so basically earth knows that aliens exist they make a deal with certain aliens to protect them from evil aliens so in order to like have an alliance with these aliens they have to send brides to certain planets so they end up asking women who are in prison hey do you want to stay in prison or do you want to be an alien's bride and go away to a different planet? <laughs> so some women choose to go to a different planet. <laughs> this is about a woman who is basically kind of like in the witness protection program. Um, she witnessed a man being murdered when she was working in her hospital and the government 
I don't know, maybe the government? I don't know who's behind it. But they want to protect her, and the only way to protect her is to send her off to another planet to be a bride to an alien. <laughs> These books are very, 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 very steamy. Fair warning to you. I really enjoyed my time reading these. It really, really, really sparked my love again for alien romance because I love alien romance. The Ice Planet Barbarian series is one of my favorite of all time. I've read all of the books in the main series and the spinoff, so I was just wanting to get back into my feeling with alien romance books. I ended up just giving this one a three out of five stars. I thought it was okay. <laughs> Speaking of alien romances, um, 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 there is another series. It is called Red Planet Dragons of Tejas. Joss, I don't know how to pronounce that. The second book is called Dragon's Mate because I listened to the first one, I believe last year. This series is very, very, very similar to the Ice Planet Barbarian series. If you like Ice Planet Barbarians, this series is if the women crash landed on a desert planet instead of an ice planet. So there you go. The main reason why I didn't really enjoy the first book is because it was just after I finished the Ice Planet Barbarian series and was like, this person's ripping this person off. Like, this is so freaking similar. Um, well, now I'm just like, I don't care. I want to read about aliens. <laughs> it's just like Ice Planet Barbarians. Women get crash landed on this desert planet. And um, these aliens are kind of like human and dragon mixed, kind of. And they find their mates with these earth women. <laughs> this one is on Audible Escape, the second book. Mm, I don't know if the first one is actually, but I ended up giving the second book a 3.5 out of five stars. The third book in the series, Dragon's Love by Miranda Martin. Audible Escape gave it three stars. Next book is Dragon's Hope. I read this one also on Audible Escape. I did not rate this one. I just am going to probably just start not rating these books because I don't know what to rate them. Like, I, I like, I just, I don't know anymore. So I, I may not rate them anymore. I know I, I didn't rate this one. Next, we're going to be talking about a series, Young Adult Paranormal Romance. If those sound interesting to you, maybe this series is for you. Um, this one is on Audible Escape. I believe all of the books on Audible Escape. I don't remember, um, but I listened to three of them. First book we have is Saving Angel by J.L. Wheel. Um, this is the first book in the Devisa series. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed this book. This gave me Twilight vibes, like huge Twilight vibes. It's not like Twilight. There's no love triangle or anything like that. It's just like a paranormal romance, young adult book that gave me the feeling of Twilight. And I really liked that aspect of it. Basically, it's about this girl and her mom. They move to a new town or new state, I don't remember. She's the new girl basically, and she moves into a house kind of like in a big area, just like in the middle of nowhere. She lives in the middle of nowhere, and her next door neighbor is just one house. And the family that lives there is a dad, his daughter, his son, and then the dad's nephew lives there with them. And it's her romance with the nephew that's there. But little does she know that these people are human demon mixes. <laughs> they're the mix between a demon and a human, I'm pretty sure. Um, they're called Devisa. And um, it was very interesting. I really enjoyed the first book. The tension between our main character woman and our man is wonderful. <laughs> so I gave that one four stars. I read the sequel Hunting Angel by J.L. Wheel, book number two in Devisa, also an audible escape. I gave this one 3.5 out of five stars. Didn't love it as much as the uh, first one. Then the third book, Chasing Angel by J.L. Wheel. Third book in Devisa series, Audible Escape, Listen. I gave this one two stars. After reading this book, I'm not continuing with the series. Just some things happened that I was not okay with in this book, personally, and um, I was kind of offended that the author did not touch upon it at all. So that's all I have to say about that one. If you, if this series sounds interesting to you, I would read it. I would read it. Um, the first book is really great. I really loved it. If you're interested, at least read the first book, but I will not be continuing on with the series after reading the third one. Next, we have Rafe, a buff male nanny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I loved this. I really enjoyed this one. I believe I listened to this on Audible. I had a credit, so I used it on this book. Um, this is about our main character, a man named Rafe, and he becomes the male nanny to two little girls 
and they're twins and they're so cute. I loved this so much. So this is about Rafe and his relationship with the mom to these twins. And um, I really enjoyed this one mainly because they didn't like hide their feelings or whatever. They basically came out and said, hey, I'm really attracted to you. What are we gonna do about this? Like they didn't like hide their feelings whatsoever. That was really refreshing and I really, really, really liked that. The uh, relationship between Rafe and the girls and the mother and the girls was so cute. I just love books with kids in them because I love kids. So I gave this book four out of five stars. Next we have Hearts in Darkness by Laura Kay. This is an Audible Escape listen. This was a recommendation from Brie from In Love and Other Words. I'm linking her channel down below for y'all. I love her a lot. Please go subscribe to Brie. She recommended this duology to me, so I read the duology. Um, the first book, Hearts in Darkness, basically is about our two main characters who get stuck in the elevator and all the lights go out and they don't know what the other person looks like and they end up sparking a connection in the dark in this elevator. It's cute. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It goes way deeper than I thought it would into PTSD and anxiety. So if those are triggers for you, I don't know if you would feel comfortable reading this. I have anxiety and I have PTSD, but not in the same situation as our main character. And I was totally fine reading this book. I really loved these two main characters and how they interacted together. The second book in the duology is uh, Love in the Light. I gave this one three stars just because, I don't know, some of it just dragged for me. It touches way more on PTSD and anxiety and depression in this book. Fair warning going in if you want to read the next book. You can read the first book without reading the second one. I didn't feel like there was a cliffhanger or anything in the first book. This duology is pretty cute though and I really enjoy my time reading this. So thank you so much Brie for recommending this duology to me. These are both on Audible Escape to listen to. Next we have On the Way to You by Candy Steiner. This was a recommendation from Shelby from Shelby Taggart Reads. So I was looking for books that had disability or chronic illness representation in it and Shelby told me that this one fits the bill for disability rep. Um, our main character woman has a prosthetic leg and our male main character deals with depression. This is about a woman who really wants to go to Washington and then she just meets a guy at the diner she works at and he's like, hey, I'm going to Washington. Do you want to come with me? And she was like, uh, no, I don't really know who you are. You're a stranger. And then all of a sudden she starts thinking about it. She's like, this may be my only chance to go to Washington. And so her and this stranger go on a road trip to Washington. And this one was very, very interesting. The tension between them was really great to read about. It was very hard to read at times because our male character deals with depression. And um, the main reason why I could not give this five stars, I gave it four stars, is because the main character woman does something that I didn't like, <laughs> I didn't really approve of, and I couldn't, like, it gave me a bad feeling and, like, left a bad taste in my mouth of her doing something that I didn't like, and I just knew I couldn't give it five stars because of that, but I ended up enjoying it. Nevertheless, gave it four stars. This one is also an audible escape if you want to listen to it. Next we have Attachments by Rainbow Rowell. So great. I gave this one four stars. This is about your main character named Lincoln. This book is set in, I believe, the 1990s and he is an internet security guard for this company. So basically he just reads emails and flags whatever emails are not talking about work. The company's saying you shouldn't use your work email for personal use. Um, so he's basically just tracking emails and reading people's emails. And he reads emails between Beth and Jennifer and he ends up developing feelings for Beth while he's reading their emails. He has no idea who she is, but he ends up falling for her while reading her emails. This book though is way more than that. This book just tells the life of Lincoln and him discovering who he is. I feel like when people talk about this book, they don't really talk about how Lincoln discovers himself in this book because this book is about Lincoln mainly. It's about Lincoln and his life and him coming out of his shell and realizing who he is as a person. I loved that and this was just a really great book. Um, if you're not really into romance and you maybe want to dip your toe in a little bit, I really recommend this one because there's not really all that much romance in here. It's mainly just about Lincoln, but he does develop a really big crush on Beth through these emails. I gave this one four out of five stars. Next we have an audible escape lesson. We have Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt. I personally love Andy Arndt. She is the audiobook narrator for a bunch of my favorite romance books. I love her. She was the narrator also for this book as well as 
writing it with Tara Civic. I loved this so much. I don't think I've ever seen a person give this book five stars. People have just said, oh, it's really cute and funny. Four, three stars, whatever. I give us five stars. It is the most I have ever, ever, ever laughed reading a book ever in my entire life. I freaking love this book. This is about a girl named Heidi. She really needs a job <laughs> and she doesn't realize it, but she ends up getting a job working at a audiobook place that reads dirty books. And to help her become more comfortable, she ends up starting up a podcast of her reading these steamy books. <laughs> And uh, this book is also about her gaining confidence and maybe going out and asking her next door neighbor out who's really, really cute and she has a huge crush on. I've never laughed more in my life than reading this book. It is so stinking funny. I love it a lot and I really want a physical copy, but I don't even know if they make them because I think it's a sole audiobook. But um, if you want an audiobook, this is the way to go. It is freaking hilarious. I gave this one five stars. <laughs> Next we have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This was another recommendation from Brie from In Love and Other Words. I gave this one five stars. I love this book. This is a book that I had been planning to read for a while because it is a book that deals with a disability of some sort because our main character Archer cannot speak and he is kind of like the town outcast because people don't really want to try to get to know Archer because he cannot speak and they don't know how to communicate with him so he's basically been outcast from his whole town. This woman moves to this town and she meets Archer. I would categorize this more as a friends to lovers because she really 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 gets to know Archer and who he is and then she develops feelings for him and it's so so beautiful. I love this book a lot. They actually communicate through sign language because our main character woman's father was deaf so she knows how to communicate with Archer and he's never met anyone who took the time to actually get to know him personally and I love this book a whole hell of a lot. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed my time listening to this one on Audible Escape. So thank you so much, Brie, for recommending this to me. This is a new favorite of all time. And lastly, we have my favorite book, I believe from January. We have Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Bunch of tabbies on this one. Um, this is our Lovely Ladies Live Show pick for the month of January. So Jen, Ashley, and I read this one. Our live show will already be up and will be linked down below for y'all to watch. This is about our main character named Chloe Brown who has fibromyalgia. She almost has a near-death experience. So she makes this get a life list because she realizes she has not done nearly enough before she dies and she really wants to do more with her life. Um, so she moves out of the house and her new landlord is this guy named red and it's their relationship it's kind of like hate or dislike to love because uh red thinks that chloe is some princess snob but then she thinks that red is this judgmental dude if y'all didn't know i have a chronic illness and i related to chloe brown so much i related to her a lot and a lot of these symptoms of fibromyalgia is what I have to deal with with something called POTS. I loved reading that and reading about something that I can relate a lot to. Chloe and Red's relationship is so good. They go through some struggles in this book but they're so valid into why they struggle with this. I love these characters. I love this book. If you want to know more of my thoughts please go check out the live show that will be linked down below. So there you have it. Those are all 20 books that I read in January of 2020. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in the next one. Bye!